So guys, today we're going to be doing a field test and review of this very awesome Allegheny M38. But before I get into this, as always guys, don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And without any further ado, let's jump over into the field test of this night. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that nice field test of the Allegheny Knives M38. So I'm back at the table to give you my overall thoughts on this knife and just how I've used it and how it's performed for me for the past few months. So starting off with this knife, I will say I've been very, very impressed with this knife, especially for the price point being around $150. This knife is actually extremely capable and it's left me quite impressed especially being that allegheny knives most of the knives they make are very tactical or are for hunting like skinning and they, they've never really made an outdoor slash survival knife and this being their first try at that i think they've done a very very good job not only at keeping the price quite affordable uh, in comparative or comparatively speaking but also delivering a very high end knife that is very performance oriented and as you guys I hopefully could see in doing many of the bushcrafting tasks this thing just takes them on like a champion and I think the primary reason this knife dominates so well at doing bushcrafting tasks is for the fact that it has a very very sharp out of box uh, and very true Scandinavian grind. They haven't tried to do anything fancy or anything, you know, kind of out there trying to do like a Scandi Vex. They just simply sat down and made a true Scandi grind knife. And I think they did a really good job with the grind on this knife. It came out of box very sharp. And in fact, it's still very sharp. And with the Scandi grind being as true as it is, it bites into wood like a true Scandinavian. And it just can craft very, very well. I've been extremely impressed by that. But in addition to that, they also made a very sharp 90 degree spine. As you guys hopefully saw there with the striking of the ferro rod, this knife throws sparks off of a ferro rod very well. And I actually really like it for starting fires. And it's one of the best backs 
I have seen so far on a knife. Aside from the more Garber, this knife is very, very good at throwing sparks off of its spine. Other than that, it's made out of, like I said, A2 tool steel, but what really has pleasantly surprised me about this A2 tool steel is that when they first told me, I was a little bit leery about it, but this is uh, tempered to 62 Rockwell, which if you guys know, that's pretty hard for most knives uh, around anywhere from 58 to 60. This is 62 and I was really unsure especially in a full Scandi because this thing has absolutely no micro bevel on it whatsoever. Um, it is pretty hard and I was wondering if it would chip out or if it would possibly break but I've been very impressed at this A2 tool steel and I've handled and used and owned lots of knives that have had A2 tool steel and I've always kind of been kind of meh about it you know it's been an okay tool steel but it's nothing really really good but in fairness having used this A2 tool steel I am very impressed with how the 62 is not or 62 Rockwell has not only been not chipped out this this edge has no chips in it whatsoever not even micro chips like you can run your fingernail across this and it does not pick up anything so it has no chips in the edge it also holds its edge very very well. so that's pretty much the basics of this edge of course this is a four inch edge so you guys can see hopefully that's what it looks like covering my palm i have medium sized hands and i think it does very well as far as being a pretty on the smaller side but of decent belt knife size for bushcrafting. I think uh, too this is also more of a Kephart style so about the only thing some people may have complaints with as far as the edge goes is that it does have a very round belly and so this so this edge here, especially this tip, is going to be harder when field dressing game animals, but it's definitely doable if you know what you're doing as well. This is not going to be a piercing this is not going to be a piercing styled blade and this is definitely not meant to be tactical. And if you want tactical, you can go to other knives. Allegheny has more than their fair share of uh, tactical knives that if you wanted more tactical, you could go for those. But once again, keep in mind that this is a field knife. I think this blade design, the Kephart blade design, was a very smart choice and I've really liked it in this knife. And once again, no real complaints. Another thing I like about it being so wide at the tip is when you do things like bow drill divots, it will work really, really well because this tip or yeah, this tip just overall is so wide that it'll really help make round, large round divot. Another thing I will note too is this coating is holding up pretty well. You guys could see I really bashed this through some wood and that's not the only wood I bashed this thing through. And except for up here where the ferro rod is striking, which is pretty common, but except for there, there is no paint missing here. This coating is holding up very well overall. So now on to the handle. This is probably my absolute favorite. I mean, I really love the edge, but probably my absolute favorite thing about this knife is its handle. I found the ergonomics from the get-go, from the start, to just be extremely squared away. It is very well rounded. They've done a very good job with the handle, in my opinion. They've left this G10 not rough, but they have not like mirror polished it so there's still a little bit of grip to it and it doesn't feel slick in the hand so i really like that it feels comfortably smooth like it doesn't feel like it's going to hurt you or rough your hand up over a long period of time but at the same time it is not uh, slippery and it's not polished like i know bark river you know they love to just polish their handles and that's cool for show but in hand it's a very slick handle this one is certainly a lot better than that. Other than that, it has been very well rounded. There's absolutely no hot spots in the hand. There's no weird protrusions uh, from the box or out of box. There's no weird protrusions of steel. And it, it looks like overall, just running your thumb around it, it looks like they've paid attention and they've taken the time to hand fit the, the handle to steel tang because like I said, there's no hot spots, no weird protrusions of steel that would hurt over time. As far as the ergonomics go too, they're very good. You can really get locked into this knife. So 
I have no fear of it slipping out of hand. Once again, this is not really a tactical knife, so it's not really designed to be like stabbed, but potentially there is enough troil here that it would really lock your hand in. So overall, I really do like it. I think the handle is just big enough. It is a five inch handle. So it's, there's more than enough room to be comfortable, especially for my hand size. You guys can see there's a good about probably inch off of sticking off of this. And there's a nice, very large lanyard hole here for putting paracord or any lanyard you want on there. And I also really like that. So overall, I really love this knife. And I think what really tops it off for me is the fact that it's only around $150 and that's from their website. Though I don't know of anyone carrying the M38 at this time, though hopefully Blade HQ would pick it up. Uh, but 150 from their website is already a really good deal in my opinion, especially for this knife. I know I compared this to, I no longer have it, but the LT Wright Camp Muck. And I think between the two knives, this thing absolutely dominates the Camp Muck, especially because this knife came $2 more and I get a fully finished knife, a knife that doesn't have hot spots, a knife that is also like two inches longer and just overall a lot better. No offense to the people who like the camp muck but this knife in my opinion was, is far better so once again another thing i like about this knife is the customizability if you do get this knife from allegheny themselves uh, you have the choice of choosing the color of your blade finish you also have the color or sorry choice of choosing the color of your handles the color of your liner and the color of your sheath so you guys can see this is a two-tone sheath um, we'll get to the sheath in a little bit, but I think that's also really awesome and I really like that fact that they give you some choices in what you can choose and what how you can customize your knife to make it a little bit more personal to you. And I think once again offering that kind of service for $150 is very and Now let's get into the negatives. So there's really only two negatives in my opinion and one is that one thing you'll have to do, what I found with my handles handle scales on my knife is that you'll need to put some blue Loctite on the threads. I found repeatedly through, especially when you start to get really physical and once again when you start to baton the knife and get really heavy uh, work done with the knife, that the handle scales, they won't fall off but they'll get loose and you can like wiggle them around and so that's something that I noticed and it happened repeatedly because at first I just tightened it down and was like hey, you know maybe it wasn't tightened from the factory but they repeatedly backed out on me and got the point where the handles the handle slabs were loose and shaking on the knife so one thing you'll have to do when you get this knife is just put a little bit of blue or red lock tight whatever you want to use uh, on those threads to make sure that that uh, bolts or the screws don't come back out and loosen the handle anyway. scales. On so this. my largest negative against this knife is its sheath and I do want to be a little bit cautious because I'm a little confused about how this knife exactly comes from factory. I've seen a lot of different sheaths for the M38 Bushcrafter. Some are leather, some are Kydex, but overall I'm not really sure what type of sheath comes with this knife. So all I can do is talk about the sheath I got. And the sheath I got is, for the most part, pretty good. I do like it, and I am a definite fan of Kydex sheaths. But my big issue with this Kydex sheath is, and it's so unfortunate, but the sheath, this Kydex sheath here, or this style, is just a little bit too small for this knife. So what I mean by this is that it doesn't have a very positive lock. So I'll show you guys. Hopefully I don't cut myself, but... You guys can see how easy that was to shake this knife out. I mean, it took nothing at all to get this knife to fall out of its sheath. And admittedly, it's a little bit of a heavier knife, but still, that was practically nothing to get it to come out of this sheath. And I really dislike that. So, like I was going to say, the big problem with the sheath is that it is just a tiny bit, just about like a quarter of an inch too short so that the sheath, if this was the sheath that they'd be making for it, the sheath needs to come back just about a quarter inch more so that the kydex can actually wrap around the uh, finger choil here. And if it were to do that, then the sheath retention would be far greater. But at this current point where the sheath is, it just, the kydex sheath can't wrap around any part or any feature of this knife. 
So the issue is there's just not that much retention. And so you guys can see if I just hold it upside down, it's good, but literally it takes nothing to get it to come out of this sheath. And that's a big bummer because that also now puts on the person who gets this knife the unfortunateness of getting a sheath for it. Which, in fairness, this knife is still probably cheap enough within reason that you could get another sheath made for it. Or you might be able to reconfigure the sheath. But anyways, I think it's just kind of a sucky thing because it's so close to being right where it's needing. Or right where you need it to be. But it's just not there. And so I think that's really unfortunate. But anyways, that those are the two biggest downsides I have to this knife. Other than those two things, I found this knife to be very well squared away. And like I said, the actual performance of the knife is very, very good. And honestly, I really do like it. And I definitely recommend, a link will be in the description below where you guys can go check the M38 out for yourself if you would like one. And I would highly encourage them. I would highly recommend you check it out. It's a really great option, a really great mid-range option that I think offers a lot of value and a lot of performance for the money. Though the one thing I would recommend you do if you are going to get one of these is definitely talk to Allegheny about what kind of sheath you're getting. And if it's something like this, I would encourage them to like make this a little bit bigger or you can tell them when you order to make this sheath, you know, like a quarter inch larger or essentially pretty much explain to them this issue. I'm probably going to explain it to them as well, but that's about the only issue I had with the knife and, or that's about the only real issue that I really dislike about the knife, um, it's just the sheath. But anyways, hopefully your knife comes in a different sheath and once again, I'm not exactly sure what sheath they send with these knives. It's just, this is the sheath that I got with my knife. So. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. I'm out.